hand me my nine iron. Marco's mom apparently has one single nine iron for the specific instance of bludgeoning possible intruders. Plus, if this were an actual burglary or home invasion taking place, a fucking nine iron isn't going to do jack when you have a sawed off or some other actual weapon pointed at you. Honey, what are you doing up? Nothing. Marco Diaz, stop! Marco Diaz. Also, how in the hell is that dog still alive? You could say the it's magic excuse, but in the last episode, we clearly see her take all traces of her magic and life on Earth with her when she leaves. Yet Marco has to be stuck with the puppies that shoot deadly lasers from their eyes? What kind of bullshit deal is that? No, it's probably nitpicking, but I need explanation my kids cartoon with magic floating horse heads and lizard businessmen, dammit! How long has it been since Star's been gone anyways? If we're to assume these decorations are still fairly new from the party and none of the helium in the balloons in the background have actually deflated, that it's safe to say that this is fairly recent enough for grief to still have a rather prominent effect. Why push him into trying to get better when the wounds are still fresh in his mind? This seems like really unhealthy action for the griever's sake. Sorry, Jimmy, your pet just died. Okay, time to get yourself a new rabbit. Raphael, what are you doing? I was just g going to call the, the teen sadness hotline. The fact that a sad teen hotline prevalently exists in this universe means that this is a serious issue across at least Echo Creek. In which case, I fully blame this on either bad parenting or a very horrible living environment overall. Either way, it's still a pretty depressing joke, with or without context, and we're still giving a sin for it. I tried, I can't even find the box. They're in the cupboard behind the dog food. I hit it so well. Behind the dog food, dear. Star would eat all of them. <laughs> And now they're both gone. It's behind the dog food, Marco. Stop being so dramatic. Star is talking to Marco like he can actually hear her. Also, doesn't this one have a built-in cell phone or something? Why can't you just call the Diaz family right now and tell them the situation while she's safe instead of playing stalker with Marco at three in the morning? Can you check on the commission? Yeah, they seem okay. Why the f did Moon think it was a good idea to tie the High Commission's dead corpses up like balloons on the carriage and not put them in with Star? All this is doing is drawing attention to their location by making a self-imposed landmark from further away. I get that they're lifeless corpses and all, but you clearly have room in the car and Star doesn't seem the least bit phased by any of this. Yes, he'll meet us there. Why does she still have Lechman's ashes right the hell beside her in the rickety cart? I get that Moon wanted to preserve Lechman's remains in memory, but it's not like there's any way to bring him back like the rest of the Commission. Goat's dead, plain and simple. You're setting unnecessary weight to the whole thing and deliberately putting it in the one spot where it could easily fall off anyways. So again I ask, why do you still have it? Okay, great! <laughs> so what's up with that Warnicorn? What? <laughs> It's the Fritz! It's causing all magic to, to weaken and... If you knew the Fritz was a thing, why did you make a magical carriage and warn a corner to try to get you to the well in the first place instead of just making a regular ass wooden carriage? You're in the fucking forest and wood is out in abundance. Your plan was literally destined to fail from minute one of bringing Star back. There must be something helpful in here. I can't wait to see you again. Uh, did your father pack this with nothing but... I don't know why you entrusted River of all people with packing necessary supplies for times of tragedy. As we see later, he's incredibly ill-equipped for these emergencies to begin with. You literally couldn't have chosen a worse person for this incredibly vital job. And now that's all I have. Moon is addicted to fire. It looks like they're just scouts. We'll let them. Mom, check it out. Star is probably the most steadfast girl in precarious situations I've ever seen, and that's not a good thing. I'll probably have half the fandom down my neck for this, but I really don't understand Star's motives here. She's told the danger numerous times by her mother and is quite clear of what this entails, and yet she tries to fight these rats that can immediately run away and inform Ludafi of their whereabouts. This is less a character flaw and more like active sabotage. <laughs> Bullshit. You cannot tell me that the High Commission, whilst flying in that trajectory up into the sky and with no foreseeable obstacles in front of them, can land in that perfect a straight path smack dab into the top of that tree. Unless there's some serious wind god fuckery or gravity wasn't paying attention for a couple of seconds, there's no way in hell this can logically add up. I've been in way worse than this. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Discount Zone Town. No, he's the gatekeeper. Wait, what? Wah! 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 She's lost her marbles. <laughs> okay, maybe it's just me being jaded to these sorts of nonsensical moments over the years, but given the context and the fact that this comes out of nowhere and ends up working, it actually gave me a little chuckle, and we'll remove a sin for it. That stuff's supposed to be all black and goopy like that. 
No, it's not. None of them actually consider checking the well first before they started pouring it under the High Commission's pods. <gasps> what are you doing? Star, what do you want me to do? It's in tatters already. Okay, I get that this is supposed to symbolize Moon's lax nature towards Star remaining on Earth, but desperate times call for desperate measures. It's just a random hoodie to Moon, and while I want to sympathize with Star for this, I also understand that getting clean is more important than clothing, even if said clothing costs $650. Corn cream. What? To eat, Star. Generations of butterflies have come here in times of danger. Even for a sanctuary that's in the middle of scenic nowhere underneath a shit ton of alligators and it being underwater, it still somehow is a working electronic vending machine. Toffee won't stop until he finds this. Did you take that from my closet? And you're just carrying it around? It's too dangerous to do anything but stay. This has to mean something. No, Star. The wands are linked. He'll find us. Oh, like he won't find us with you carrying his finger around. And now I'm going to have to be a dirty flip-flopper inside with Star in this one. Even if you had the High Commission and the Wands in order, you having Toffee's finger is the equivalent of you taking a GPS marker from someone who owns a GPS. You probably should have known how this was going to play out otherwise when you have the one thing that Toffee is adamantly looking for. <laughs> Toffee and his monsters killed my mother. And in typical Disney fashion, we have an off-screen death of a mother figure to create a tragic backstory to one of the main cast. Look, hate me all you want, but like it or not, this is still a Disney show. And it being on television does not excuse it from the typical tropes used in their other mediums. It doesn't take away from the dramatic moment, but it does add to our Disney sin bingo count nonetheless. I thought you sent Grandma to a Grandma farm to hang out with other grandmas. The fact that she believed this for nearly 15 years and never once questioned where said grandma farms were on Muni. And they're the ones who put your mama in a wooden nightgown. You know, they, uh, uh they put her on ice. Uh, drapes down in fun town. Thank you, Mina. Uh, sorry about your mama. Did you get it, audience? Moom's mama's dead. Get it? Got it? <laughs> okay. Put the caboose and let's croak those toads! I think we should go to war. Now is not the time, and her magic isn't strong enough for war yet. Especially against the lizards. They're indestructible. I commissioned and the rest have some valid points, but is this really the best time to be screaming about this, especially when Moon is sitting right there? Queen Moon! Oh, I'm sorry, spoke out of place. I, I got you something. Uh, what is this? It's an apology meet. It's how we Johansons apologize. Despite supposedly knowing River for a good while now and having feelings for him at this point, she still doesn't know their family's customs for apologies. Excuse me. I'm gonna go cry in your mama's chapter. <laughs> Even in times of great sorrow and tragedy, Glosserick still finds a way to be a lazy asshole to his owner. Me. Four. What is with the Munions and all of these fucking conveniently placed vending machines? There's not even wiring or anything powering these things. You could have made that argument back at the sanctuary, but here it's all crystal. There's no way these things should even work to begin with. How long have I been here? Uh, like 300 years? <coughs> 300 years. Eclipsa doesn't seem to give two shits about her 300 year imprisonment, so long as she's got her also probably 300 year old snookers bar. Seriously, did anyone ever restock those, or have they just been there for centuries? The machine seems relatively new, yet she also seems to know the exact candy combination of the machine as well. I wouldn't make such a big deal over it if the movie didn't make such a big deal over it. Yeah, I get Moon doesn't fully realize the scope of what she's done and just wants an easy out to her mother's killer, but surely making a magical contract with the malevolent evil queen wasn't the only solution, right? What about using the whispering spell that she teaches Star later to temporarily defeat Toffee and place him in part of the wand? Especially considering he survives Eclipse's spell initially here. This doesn't really solve anything, and only seems to prolong the inevitable. What was that for? I'm just doing my job, your majesty. Evil queen, gotta freeze it. That's Queen Sist. She's gone mad with grief! She was so <laughs> She's not dead yet, you fool! Mildred has a point. River seems highly optimistic for her plans, which makes sense considering what happens afterwards, but for everyone else looking from the outside in, she's facing certain death. Yes, but you may call me... Toffee. Toffee? How is that any better? Moon would be excellent at cinema sense. <laughs> Toffee tries to approach the situation shockingly casually, despite the ominous swirling purple clouds covering the entire monster camp. Have you learned nothing? <laughs> A 
It's not growing back! <laughs> Why is Davi just walking away? Yeah, he basically got beaten his ass by a magical teenage princess and became an embarrassment to his entire army. But he's still an immortal lizard, right? Can he just kill her right then and there while everyone is back at the castle? 